Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at playing sounds. So I've got this game at the moment which uh, bounces this ball around. It's a very, very simple game. And in order to make this uh, at all playable, really we want it to make some sounds as the ball bounce, bounces around. So we're going to look in this tutorial at how to play a sound. And I just want to mention once again that um, it doesn't actually look this jerky in real life. It's just that the screencast, which I keep calling emulator by mistake, but the screencast of my phone only refreshes once every so often, which makes it look pretty horrible. So I'm just going to show you how to load one sound in this tutorial, and then we'll look at playing more sounds together in the next tutorial. And I'm going to use a, a class called Sound Pool. So in my game class, this is a logical place to load sounds because I'm already loading bitmaps in there. And I need some sounds to load. And I've created some sounds for my game. So I've got sounds for when the ball bounces. And I've got sounds for when the game is lost or won and a sort of start sound, which I might use as well. So I'm just going to copy those and I'm going to go to Eclipse and I'm going to create a folder for these. So I'll right click, in fact I'll create a folder in Resource. I'll right click the Resource folder, Res folder and go to New Folder and I'll just arbitrarily create a folder called Raw and click Finish. Or I could call it Sounds or something like that I suppose. I, I don't think there's any particular need to call it Raw but uh, it's as good a name as any because this is going to be kind of raw data. So I'll right click raw and I'll, well it's not really raw data but anyway, I'll right click raw and I'll paste my sounds into there and you can also just go to the folder on disk and copy them in but if you do that don't forget to right click and go to refresh to make them actually appear. And let's try to just play the start sound here. So I'll in game here I'm going to give this a private sound pool and I'll call that sound pool with a lowercase s and in the constructor of game I will create a new sound pool so let's say sound pool equals new sound pool and the constructor takes a few different things let's just add the input there it's just a random error from Eclipse. Um, it's Control Shift O. Maybe the input's already in there now. And then I'll do Control Space. And here we've got a few arguments that we need to supply. So we need to supply the maximum number of sounds that we're going to play simultaneously. And in this game, I can't imagine it's going to be all that many. So let's just say five. And it probably won't even be that many. And the stream type here, we can see, should be set to soundpool.stream music for games so it says down here and I haven't explored any of the other types let's just use that so I'll say soundpool.stream music maybe I'm wrong there actually maybe it's not soundpool.stream music let's just take a look yeah it's audio manager.stream music so I'll say here audio manager.stream music stream music there we go and now the third argument here, it says is, I think it says it's not used, it's the source quality, which currently has no effect, and it says use zero. So we'll use zero for future compatibility. So we've got our sound pool that can manage and play a pool of sounds. And now we can load a sound and play it. So let's go down here and, well, actually, maybe in init, just for the moment, I will play a kind of start sound. So let's say sound pool. This method is called when the game loads up, but I could put this in the constructor. I just want to show you here playing one sound. I'll say sound pool dot load and we need to pass in the context and I think I, I think I have that here hopefully. We have um, maybe I don't maybe I don't have the context here. How annoying so let's let's pass it in to my game then because I'm passing in resources and the surface holder but at the moment not the context so I'll go to my 
source code and game is created in game view and let's say that when we when we create the game we pass in the context which I was kind of hoping to avoid but um, it feels kind of messy but fair enough so here's my game constructor and I'm just going to pass in this for the context and the context is an interface that the activity implements and I'll go to game click on it and press F3 and in here we can say context context and I can have a private variable to store that context so private context context and I mustn't forget to set it down here so this dot context equals context and I'll just just do control shift O to add the import for context and now we've got it in a private variable and it's passed into the constructor I can go ahead and use it down here so I can say sample.load context resource ID is of course the idea of the sound we want to load and I put those in uh, I put the sounds as mp3 files in a folder called raw so I'm going to say here r.raw. and let's try this start sound here and the priority I think is not used but let's just check so if I just delete that and do control space maybe delete the bracket and um, hopefully we can bring up um, well there's no I'm trying to bring up the help but maybe if I hover over load here and no that's not working either let's try typing zero and now hover over load and there we go and if I move into here and scroll down whoops let's try that again I'm pretty sure that the last variable is not used so priority the priority of the sound currently has no effect use one for future compatibility so let's just put one for this last argument there and now finally we can go ahead and play it and we need to make sure that the sounds are loaded before we actually play them and normally probably what I'll do is not kind of worry about it because I think if you try to play a sound that's not loaded I don't think you get an error or anything but we'll kind of look into that later but since since here I want to just type something below this line that will play the sound I am going to have to load it because it's this is going to return immediately but it's not going to be loaded until some time later so to get around that we can say sound pool dot add or set on load listener on load complete listener and here we can have a new on load complete listener and let's just use the kind of anonymous method syntax here to implement the on load complete method of this interface and I'll just do control shift O to add that and we need complete listener. I think that's the one and now this will be called when uh, a sound is loaded and we know what sound it is because load here actually returns an ID if we take a look at this we can say that it says um, it returns a sound ID and this value can be used to play or unload the sound so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say int start sound ID equals sample.load and then this ID is going to be passed in as sample ID here so if I just want to make sure that I'm playing the start sound um, even though um, in on load even though actually at the moment I'm only loading one sound I could say on if start sound ID equals sample ID then I know I've got the start sound rather than some other sound that I could also have loaded down here and uh, oh yeah I need to make this final in order to be able to access it in this anonymous method and now let, let's finally play it so I'll say sound pool dot play and I need the sound ID which is going to be start sound ID of course and the volume which uh, is between 0 and 1 let's just check that let's go to the documentation so the the volume is where are we let's take a look the volume is 
0 to 1.0. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make that respond to kind of the volume level that the user sets. But for a moment, I'm going to hard code it. And we're going to have um, a priority of 1 and and loop is going to be 0 for no loop and rate is going to be 1 for normal playback. So we're going to have 1, 1, priority 1, loop 0 and rate 1. I think that's correct. Let's just take another look. So sound ID, the volume 1, so I'm going to play at a maximum volume just for demo purposes. Priority of one and um, to make it play, I want it to play as soon as as soon as I tell it to play, rather than kind of dallying about. Loop is going to be zero because I don't want it looped, and rate is going to be one for normal playback. So let's try that. And if I've got this right, when I start my game up now, we should hear a sound. So let's see. And well, we've got some errors here. I'm not sure where. Let's take a look at game view. And the constructor is undefined. Did I change the constructor properly? So we've got a context there. And in here, it's saying, oh, yeah, I need to say not this because we're in the view class. I need to say get context. And that should do the trick. So we're in the view. And to get the context, the activity, I can say get context. OK, let's run that and see if that works. And hopefully, we, we'll hear a sound. So usually, I, I often cut bits out of my video when we're just waiting for something to load. But I won't do that this time, because we're going to hear the sound as soon as it starts. And I want you to be able to hear it. So bear with me. Let's take a look at the console. Uh, where are we? The console here, Android. So it's installing, and in the next tutorial, we're going to look at playing multiple sounds. And there we go, that's my start sound, which I must admit is perhaps a strange choice of a start sound, but I'll let you fiddle about with that to your heart's content. So that's how we play a single sound. And in the next tutorial, we'll look at playing multiple sounds, and we'll look at adjusting the volume uh, either in the next tutorial or the one after, using the volume button on the side of the phone. So that's it for this time. And just a reminder, I, I created this sound using something called Cycle, which I think I still have open down here, or maybe not. But it's um, if you look for Cycle Modular Music Creator, it's, um, it's a tool that you can use to create both sound effects and also actual music for free. So it's, it's really handy for this sort of thing. And I just did the volume and trim the sound in Audacity, which is another free music um, editor. So that's it for this time. And until next time, happy coding.